for everybody that has an emergency alarm, that last minute alarm, that's the emergency in case your regular alarm doesn't go off here, here, because uh, that's where, that's why I'm here this morning. Because uh, oh, yeah. my my phone is on my my phone is my alarm and it goes off it starts going off very early, and and uh, my phone went dead last night so interesting I had nothing so did mine uh, <laughs> completely dead. Bill's yeah. real emergency alarm is when Allie gets sick and she, tired of hearing the other alarms yeah. and punches. She, what you know, she shuts off my CPAP machine. <laughs> and I'm completely completely without air, so uh, I wake up immediately. All right, last night was uh, the big uh, Hillary night, and still today we're talking about Donald Trump. Uh, how is it that he continues to steal away the publicity, yet, uh, you know, they say in, uh, in PR, as long as they spell the name correctly, right? It's like, no news is bad news. Um, no press is bad press. But I got to tell you, there are some things, and sooner or later you do have to wonder. We talked about this yesterday morning. Um, just the th- when you're running for president, the things that are said sometimes, well, used to anyway, uh, mean something uh, for people's confidence when it comes to being president. And is Trump back in the news again today? Well, he is. He said uh, that those who criticized him at the DNC, he wanted to hit them. And then he kind of clarified that he meant verbally hit them. But again, I, you know, I tried to defend every yesterday. time I see those people, every time I see those people, I want to hit them. Uh, that's just so not something that you'd hear out of Ronald Reagan or you'd hear out of, well, I can't imagine Abe Lincoln. Uh, and, and somebody said to me yesterday, you know, you go back to the early days of our presidency, uh, early days of this country, and, uh, you know, our forefathers fought and they said some terrible things about each other. And that's true. Andrew Jackson, there's a lot, of, uh, there's a lot there when you go back and read through what happened. But this is a different time. This is a, um, it, it is, it, it, there is a, a decorum. There is a, an expectation that that we have basically mandated for our president. And maybe we're ready to give that up. Maybe it's time that we, you know, we want to go back 240 years. I don't know. So you tried to defend him yesterday. That was your. Yeah. And I'll, I'll, again, I still think, you know, I think you characterized it as something like a morning show or a late night host might say about the 30,000 deleted emails. We've all people in radio have made careers off this. That you say things, and sometimes you say them in a way that gets people a little bit uh, riled up, and and you back it up a little bit, but it creates a it creates a radio program, it creates an audience. Um, sometimes you do whatever you can to get into the newspaper, but um, uh, uh, that was the day. In the day, that's what you did, and, yeah. and press was huge. I remember when um, I had the Hannah thing, and we had announced that Ed Hannah was was resigning, and. Um, I, I, the uh, corporation council called me into the office and um, sat me down and said, uh, "Listen, um, it's been a lot of uh, a lot of negative press about you in the last three weeks, and um, I'm bet I'm I'm betting that's really hurting right now." And I said, "You don't understand. This is the greatest <laughs> moment of my career. Uh, you don't get it." And and that would mean that there are people that would be mad, and people angry, people loved it, people, but they're talking about it. And that's what Trump's doing. It's guerrilla marketing. It's what he's doing. I'm just not sure that fits the office. No, I, I, I agree. I still don't think that his comment about Russia was that bad. I But I do agree that, that it's I think not, that was a, it's stupid, not presidential. Stupid comment to the, make. The issue with the comment. The, the main issue with the comment is it may be tongue-in-cheek to the people that will always love and support him and the people that absolutely hate him because it makes no difference. But when you go into the, let's say, you know, let's say fast forward down the road, he wins the presidency and he makes some tongue-in-cheek comment about mm, North Korea or Iran or another country that already hates us. They're not going to be as forgiving as the people that already love and support him no matter what or the people that hate him anyway Here's that are a, in the country. Here is Christine Bellino, live from Mississippi. Good morning, Christine. What do you think? Isn't it interesting how today, here we are today, talking about Donald Trump when Hillary Clinton made the biggest speech of her life last night? She did, and I actually think she did pretty well. She kind of held her own. It's been a rough ride for the DNC. I mean, every day, imagine what that's like being that PR person or PR people where you have to go, okay, how are we going to make sure that we maintain headlines? And talk about decorum. There used to be a 
a, I guess a kind of a, a sh chivalrous action where, you know, the Republican candidate stepped aside during the Democratic National Convention so that they could have their time, and the Democratic candidate did the same during the RNC, and that is no more. And I, I think Hillary Clinton verbally held her own last night, despite the fact that there were some some protests by Bernie supporters. But and I'm I'm really glad that you made the comparison between Donald Trump and Andrew Jackson because I think that that's it in a nutshell. I think yeah. a lot of people <laughs> are making that comparison and they're saying, you know, we need an Andrew Jackson right now. We need somebody who's going to, you know, challenge someone else to a duel, even if that someone else is North Korea. Um. <clears throat> And those people are stupid. Uh, so um, if we could move on. Uh, listen, uh, her speech last night, I do have to tell you, the, I, I'm not a, a Hillary fan, and I, her, I, I don't know what it is. I didn't like Chelsea's. I mean, what they said is not the issue. It's just their delivery. Oh, I'm not a I'm fan of that. Che I think Chelsea's was weak, and I think that Hillary's was probably the best we've seen, but it was weak. But it's something about... And I hate to say that maybe this is like an anti-woman thing, and I hope it doesn't come off that way. But there's just something about her delivery that grates on me. And it it, it is the speech I wasn't looking forward to. And, <laughs> and Chelsea, of all the people that spoke, uh, Hillary's was the one I wasn't looking forward to. I think it would have been awesome if she would have just come up and waved um, and then been, okay, see you later. This has been a lot of fun this week. Uh, and Chelsea, I, I guess I was somewhat um, looking forward to that. But I thought hers was it just I mean, you compare the Chelsea speech to like a, a Michelle Obama um, and there's just no there's just no comparison. There's no passion. There is there's yeah, there's, it's the passion. It's, yeah. it's, it's it's the delivery. And and maybe, you know, we always talk about um, Christine. We've talked a lot about how uh, you got to feel bad for someone who's really ugly and not personable and they're on trial for murder. And mm. oh, by the way, they didn't do it. Because the jury's going to look at them and say, ah, I just, you know, they look like, they kind of look like somebody who's guilty. And, you know, good luck to those people because it's tough to convince somebody that what you look like isn't what you really are. And what you sound like isn't what you really are. And that, I think, is part of the problem that, that Hillary has. Well, also, just my, uh, just my, uh, my take. Hillary or Chelsea? Uh, both of them. Yeah. I, I, well, Chelsea's, uh, Chelsea doesn't have the greeting. I don't think that has the greeting bite that uh, that her mom has, but it just wasn't a powerful. It wasn't powerful when she was trying to re-deliver the powerful lines. They they didn't seem powerful, and she was emotional and she did a great job. Don't get me wrong; it just wasn't something that I walked away and said, "Wow, that just blew me away." All her speeches sound the same. That's the problem. Yeah. A B C D E F. There's a there's a there's it's a, like a constant yelling. There's or a like yelling, a screaming there, it's, going on. It's uh, it, it it is a yelling syndrome. And if Ugh. she would step back down, but even then, then I listened to the speech and she did. She came down many times, but that it just didn't. It it doesn't. It doesn't mean she's not competent. Doesn't mean she won't make a great president. I I know a lot of people feel that that is even a ridiculous thought. Uh, but I just I have a tough time. So. It's a tough time listening to her. I don't know what it is. Can we talk about Trump again after the break? Welcome back. 622, <laughs> here's Christine with an update. And by the way, today is officially Christine's final on-air day. Uh, it won't stop. We're still going to do stuff and work with Christine and collaborate on issues and things and stuff. But officially, today will be the final day for Christine to take all of that technology, pack it into a closet, shut the door, and try to merge into our program before she goes off and works her full-time job in Mississippi. Christine uh, is going to be our mosquitoes correspondent. So. Oh, yeah, special mosquito.